Okay, today I'm going to re go through five books that I've read and read the um, back, either the back or the front cover because I know some hard books have in here and then tell you what I thought of them. I know they're all backwards so you can't read them so I'll read them but this one is The Tapper Twins Tear Up New York, Maggie Being in Love, the newest George Diaries book. It's called Tales from a Not-So-Friendly Frenemy. And then I Like Him, I Like Him, He Likes Her, which is a collection of three of the Alice books, which is a series written by, I guess it's all the authors, but Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. It includes Alice Alone, Simply Alice, and Patiently Alice. And then there's Little Miss Red by Robin Palmer. And then this Zork Diaries is by Rachel Renee Russell. Maggie Being in Love is by Trisha Rayburn. The Topper Twins is by Jeff Rodrigue. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. But we... Okay, so I'm going to start by reading the backs of I Like Him, He Likes Her. Find a penny, pick it up, and all, d all day long you'll have good luck. Except, of course, if that penny is a pretty and funny and the person picking her up just happens to be your boyfriend. Alice McKinley's McKin freshman year is not as lucky as she was hoping it would be, but she's trying to look on the bright side. There are worse things than being single for a semester for, for school year the whole summer. For the whole summer. At least Alice can count on her best friend for support, in theory anyway. Lately they haven't been there for her. In fact, it seems like Pam and Liz are suddenly and involved in intense secret conversation whenever Alice is around. Sinzel is starting to feel a whole lot, a whole lot like Solo. Okay, so I really did like this book, and I liked all the other Alice books that I've read. But the thing is, the back only really talks about the first book, which is Alice Alone, and it makes it seem like the whole time she's going to be like annoyed that she's single and not like it. But in reality, the book is about how she like grows from it and like is strong you know, like the last two books are amazing and it's just about Alice being by herself and not really caring about her boyfriend Patrick but in the the back it just makes it seem like that it's just like reviewing the first book instead of summar summarizing the first book instead of just to giving you a little bit of everything so I feel like that isn't the back of the title would make it seem a little bit worse than it actually is because I really do like it and I like how she acts on her own and how she like keeps herself busy and makes herself go out and do stuff instead of sitting at home and being sad about it for the rest of her life. But she does for the first bit, which is good because sometimes you really do need to do that. But yeah, I really did like it. I would give it like three stars out of five. And then, okay, the next one is Little Miss Red. I did not like this book at all. Here's why. First, I'll read the back. When Sophie Green goes to spend spring break at her grandmother's house in Florida, she never dreams she'll end up catching the eye of the hottest guy she's ever seen. As much as Sophie craves excitement, she's a seatbelt wearing three square meals a day, good girl at heart. She doesn't even have the guts to wear dark as midnight nail polish. But Sophie dreams of being the girl who isn't afraid to live on the edge. So when a motorcycle riding hottie calls her red and flashes her a wolfish grin that practically screams danger, what is a nice girl to do but jump at the chance to walk on the wild side? Yeah. I read this. I didn't like the main character. I didn't like how she acted. I didn't like how she was just craving drama and craving, like, just being stupid and I didn't like her and I didn't like how she wanted it to be drama all the time, wanted to be, be, feel dangerous and I didn't like that at all. So yeah, I give this, like, one out of five. Um, okay, now here's a series that I really like, the Dork Diaries book. Dork Diaries book series. But, um... Okay, so there's no, there's, on the back, it's just the other books, and there's no thing in the front. So basically, in this version, Nikki is going to the girl who is bullying her, who actually moves to a different school. She's going to that school now for a exchange thing between schools in the area. Sorry, okay, um, she has, she has been chosen to go to the school that her bully is going to. 
or the girl who was bullying her, but of course she's going to a different school now, so it's fine. But in the last book, she found out that Mackenzie, who is the bully, um, had sort of stolen her identity and made it out that she was the one bullying her and like took that and like the way she did it it seemed believable and in the last book it was half of the book was actually from Mackenzie's perspective which I did not like and like the fan of fit into two teams which is dork and drama queen and except it's really like dork and drama queen because drama queen size is a lot smaller but um I definitely, I like that they're adding more to this Mackenzie character, and I liked how they, like, didn't make her just, they, like, gave her sort of a reason to do this. Not that it really was a reason, but I need to stop reading these books because they make me so angry because Mackenzie, she gets away with it. No matter what, she gets away with what she's doing. Like, she gets away with locking them in the closet even though they win, so haha -ha jokes on her. And the ice dancing one, which is called, uh, Tales from the Not-So-Grateful Ice Princess. She gets away with, she locks her and her friends in the closet so they can't come out and perform. They get out eventually, but it just annoys me because no matter what she does, she gets away with it and there's like minimal punishment. She knocks Mackenzie out with the dodgeball, but okay, she does get in trouble for it, but she doesn't get what she really deserves for most of this. And she even tries to make it so, so it seem like she's the victim. And I really, I love the books and I think they're really greatly written and I like that they're trying to give her backstory, but I can't. She just makes me so angry and infuriated and... <sighs> okay, now we have this one. Tapper Twins Tear Up New York. I love it. It's the um, third or second one? Uh, it's the second one in the series. It's the Tapper Twins go to war with each other, which was awesome. And then there was Tapper Twins Tear Up New York, which is the one, this one. And then there's the Tapper Twins run for president. So, this one is about, you have Claudia and Reese, who are the twins, and they, um, they're always fighting and stuff, but they usually get along. But this one, Claudia has decided to set up a scavenger hunt for their school. Well, she has the idea, right? Okay, and so it's an oral history, so I'm gonna re try to read the back, but it's kind of confusing because there's, like, pictures and headings and stuff. This is the official history of the first ever Colvett Prep Scavenger Hunt for Charity, which is a huge success and did not cause a riot in the streets of New York. Yeah. Okay, so this is Reese. That's not what the newspaper article said. And then it has an art article saying, School kid, school kids scavenger, <laughs> scavengers run riot. Private school kids, parents, and fundraiser ruckus. That article is not true. Mostly all the bad stuff <laughs> was YouTube's fault. That was Claudia. Reese. It's, cr that's cray. We weren't, we weren't anywhere near that fight in Times Square. The fight in Times Square, and that has a picture of Cookie Monster and someone else who I don't know who it is. And then, they're both two big blue furry monsters. And then Claudia, we got locked up in the back of a truck headed for New Jersey. <laughs> and that has a picture of a truck and a caption from their mom's phone. No, it's from Claudia's to their mom saying, Mom, help, I'm trapped in a truck. Reese, okay, that was me, but the riot was your fault. Claudia, no comment. And then it has their, um, I don't know who it is, but it's, like, things on this website they use. And it says, Jacob, this is not the Night Stalker. I, I-K-R, past the popcorn, y'all. So, basically, that's how it's, like, the style. But I love it because I love the way how they're just constantly, like, being sarcastic with each other. And, like, bouncing off of each other. And it's hilarious. And it makes me laugh. And I love it. And I like the way it's written. <laughs> And I like the way how they end up in these crazy situations where, of course, they're ridiculous, but it still makes me laugh. Okay. So now there's this one. Maggie Beat in Love. Oh, wait. Yeah. Did I forget? I forgot to rate the last two. So this one would be two out of five stars, and then this one would be four out of five. Okay. Now, Maggie Beat in Love. Maggie's cheek burnt red, knowing things would be different. Arnie, Arnie's pick... Arnie'd picked her up at her house before, but now, knowing that he liked her as more than a friend, everything felt different, bigger somehow, more important. At the start of 8th grade, Maggie is really, truly 100% happy. She's successful. She successfully maintained her weight, moved into a beautiful new house, and best of all, fallen in love. Maggie wants nothing more than to bask in the joy of having a boyfriend, but nothing come, ever comes that easy. 8th grade is one year closer to high school, and Maggie has a lot to do, 
<laughs> Academic club, swim team, and pitch for all this. Can Maggie handle the pressure, and will her new relationship survive while she's figuring it all out? So, yeah. I liked it okay. I mean, it was just seemed like another book. Like, another... I don't know. I read a lot of books like this, and it didn't seem like to stand out or anything in particular that was, like, special. It just seemed like another book that was kind of there. So I'd give this a 2 out of 5. So yeah, that was me reviewing books.